Well, welcome back. And as you can see, I've got so it poured with rain while you're gone. I'm not complaining because we need the rain, but you know, I was going to talk about drought resistant plants. So anyway, if I do it every time and it rains, then I'm, I'm lucky. Okay, so let's talk about the container. I've got this gorgeous kind of concrete, hand cast stone, they call it, and I'm going to fill it with soil. Now, the preparation is really, really important, and I can't stress it enough. So first thing you've got to make sure, is there a good drainage hole in it? You want any water that does land it in the winter to be able to work its way through the soil and out. So we have a drainage hole there. And the first thing I do, uh, first prep is to put what I call a crock. It's a bent piece of terracotta. I put it over the hole. You don't want the soil mix to plug it. And to be extra safe, I actually will put some gravel. Now this is 1B stone. Don't use marble chips, they will actually change the pH. And I'm gonna carefully put it over the crock. That crock acts like a bridge. So the water can go through the soil. It's gonna hit a layer of gravel at the bottom and it's gonna find that crock where there's a bridge. So that hasn't been plugged. So the water can get out of the hole. So with your container, make sure you just, you shim it off the ground a bit. I put it around and it just gives enough height so when the water's got out of a container, it can get away. But if you had dirt all the way around it, that may not happen, and the container could be in danger of filling up. What we need now is a soil mix that will drain beautifully. So in my wheelbarrow here, I've got some of the mix already done, but let me show you what I use. And first of all, I do use a potting soil mix, and this is not a bad one, but it's uh, a peat-based, or it's coconut fibers based, and it can stay a little bit too wet. So what I add to it, I put a, about a third of that in, and then to give it a little bit more drainage, a little bit more airspace, porosity, I'm using, it's basically bark chips. Chunks of bark, maybe a little bit of wood in there as well. And also for sedum, I'm gonna put that 1B stone in there, about a third. The angular chips create airspace and it allows the water, when it hits it, to drain all the way through. The, uh, the potting soil mix usually has a bit of slow release fertilizer in it. And what I create is a soil mix that when you squeeze it, it kind of squeezes back and it's very, very crumbly. So let me get a good shovel full. Don't disturb the gravel. I'm not going to pack it down. Well, I'm going to probably fill it up about halfway. You can always add soil a bit later on. All right, here is a beautiful, taller variety of sedum. This is Cibolii. It has a wonderful autumn color. The leaves are just beginning to show a little bit of red. I'm carefully pulling it out. Just looking, there's a little bit of fine roots there. I'm going to break that apart. Now I want it to be higher so I'm about an inch higher. Let's go an inch and a half. And I'm going to put in there. And then let's go around the edge. Here's something that's a little bit bigger. These are one of these Dazzleberry newer varieties. Makes an excellent ground cover, this one. I'm going to put this on the side and just tilt it so it's going to come up to that height. Now let's have a nice color combination. I'm going to put this, look at that, a little bit of blue in this one. I'll put it right on the edge, that's good. That blue color looks fantastic next to these smoky purple ones. So I'm going to let this hang over the planter. Not a great root ball there, so I'm going to make a little hole there. Again, keeping that flush with my tilt. The dome is coming up. Um, how about a strong yellow color next door? We've got our good old friend. It's one of the Angelina series. Now this is in a big pot. I might have to dig out some of that soil. And I'm going to put that over on the side. There we go. So what do we got left? We've got some little blue spreading ones. I've only got little plants like this, so I'm going to put two of them together and pretend it's one. On this side, 
I'm going to put this great big ground. This is a wonderful spreading. They call this one Voodoo. Has a little bit of red in it, pinky red. So I think that's pretty good. And nice big space there. And it's a little bit flush. That's, that's good. The only weakness of sedum is that they tend to be a little bit brittle. They can break off. But as I said, if they break off, you can always stick the little shoot that broke off back in the ground. And in the summertime, two or three weeks later, you've got new roots on that. Okay, I know it looks a bit floppy because they've been grown next to each other and whatever, but they will soon merge together and make a wonderful container. We keep our sedum table right next to the hens and chicks. So how about putting one hens? I know it was going to be a sedum container, but Sempervivum is such a funny, wonderful, easy to grow plant. Same conditions, it doesn't like sitting in wet soil. Dry, hardly any soil is fine. I'm going to put a light coating of gravel on the top. This is actually anti-skid. And I put it in there and you can see the dust immediately changes the water color. Now that fine dust, like the clay particle size, can help bond the soil together and stop the drainage. So it's good to get it out. It's going to make a nice covering and suppress any weeds. But <laughs> I can assure you weeds are never a problem with these aggressive sedums. So you can see that we do have a slight dome, which is good. And a little bit of manure tea on that one. And again, if the soil drains well, it's not gonna wash the gravel away. It's just gonna percolate all the way through just like that. Look how quickly it disappears. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas uh, for a container that can get through the winter. If you've got any questions, I'm down here at Greystone Gardens. I'd love to see you. See you soon.